Welcome into Sports Memo's betting podcast for Monday, February 24th with Teddy Covers. We're talking presidential odds. Donald Trump versus the Democratic field and the Democratic field overall. But uh, Teddy Covers, welcome in. Happy Monday to you. Hey, good to be here, Drew. I thought this was an interesting topic uh, for our Monday show and it you know, changed things up a little bit. And this is not about where my political leanings are or your political leanings are, Drew, or any of our audience's political leanings are. Okay, I don't care if you're a liberal. I don't care if you're conservative. I don't care if you're, a, you know, uh, the, whichever side you like. This is about realistic odds about who's going to win in 2020, which we didn't have in 2016 because, and we'll talk about it in, in a moment, Drew. This is not a true marketplace in the sense of the sports betting marketplace. In sports betting, all right. You might have opinions. You might have fandom. It's not a huge deal. Okay. You're, the, the markets are going to move towards who they think are going to win the game or cover the spread or whatever. In political betting, all the bettors have opinions, political opinions. And as we saw in 2016, those who were involved in the markets tended to skew a little bit less conservative than the U.S. public as a whole, and that's why we saw, you know, Trump as eight to one dog to beat Hillary. It had to do with market inefficiency more than the fact that Trump pulled off this incredible upset. It was a huge upset, make no mistake about it, but those weren't true odds. Those were odds that were based on the political leanings of the people who were involved in the betting markets, which is very similar to the situation that we have for the 2020 election. The wise guys don't love Trump. And it shows in these odds. And, and, and Teddy, just to, to, to kind of recap here, we're, we're going to be kind of quoting bet online odds here. So uh, that's what we'll go off of. There are other lines out there. Um, but I guess this is just kind of the most popular ones that we can go off of here, Teddy. And when you bring up the fact of, you know, where the wise guy leans, leans were and they weren't exactly true odds is that because the information to get odds has changed over the last decade even plus in terms of who's actually going to win it's very hard to gauge now compared to the past not necessarily no i i i think it was bias you know i, I think it was class you know again if you want to throw out the terminology it was liberal bias in the betting markets okay um they couldn't the, the, they couldn't conceive of people enough people in the key states voting for Trump. They recognized that Trump was going to lose the popular vote and the popular vote and the electoral college vote are two very different things. And when we talk about the odds here, the odds are very similar or they're not, I'm sorry, they're very different and mm -hmm. they deserve to be very different because the U S presidency is decided based on the electoral college and in this system, you know, this constitutionally designed system was designed to make sure that all the states had their rights heard, had their voices heard, you know, back in the 1700s. In the modern era, it means that 40 of the 50 states are out of play. You know, we already know who's going to win at least 40 of the 50 states in November, regardless of who the Democratic candidate is. All right. So it really means that in these six or eight or 10 toss up states, that's where the election gets decided, and that's where the odds need to be reflective of much more than, I mean, talk about who's going to win, not who's going to win the popular vote, but who's going to win the election. It's about the electoral college. It's not about the popular vote. All right, Teddy. Well, let's start off at the top here, quoting, uh, again, bet online odds. Uh, Teddy Covers on Twitter, at Teddy underscore covers. I am Drew Martin on Twitter, at Drew Martin Betts. Find both of us at sportsmemo.com. Podcast going each and every day, Monday through Friday, sportsmemo.com, podcast tab, or wherever you download your podcast at. Also, simulcasts on YouTube at Sports Memo and at Wager Talk YouTube. Uh, Teddy, top of uh, the political card here, we got Donald Trump <laughs> minus 175 versus the field, in quotations, any other candidate, plus 165. So we're seeing Donald Trump minus 175. Field plus one sixty five. Shout out to Bet Online, by the way. That's a pretty tight. Uh, what's that? that's kind of like a dime line there, minus one seventy five. 
So, uh, you know, hats off to the bookmaker there. But Donald Trump minus 175 field plus 165. What are your thoughts, Teddy? So I, I've done a bunch of research on on uh, the history of betting. <laughs> uh, I, I did a whole prior like a decade ago where I sat down with uh, Howard Schwartz one summer at the Gamblers Book Club back in the old days. And I did this whole series of articles on the history of betting and uh, the history of betting in the U.S. and how we've come to the uh, to the world that we're in right now. Betting on presidential elections is bigger historically than any other kind of betting. Okay, people love betting this stuff. <laughs> and in the 1800s, I mean, it was this was the betting event. You know, this was the Super Bowl. <laughs> well, and, I mean, there's a ton of betting on this. And in the modern era, we haven't seen it the same way. You still see the offshore markets involved heavily in presidential betting. You don't see that uh, uh, here in the U.S. So whatever bets you're going to get down on is going to have to be in an obscure market, uh, in a non-regulated market, as opposed to the regulated markets here in the States when it comes to the presidential election. We talk about Trump minus 175. And we can go through the Democratic candidates one by one. I don't know how deep you want me to yeah, get into this. We, no, we will. We will. Every Democratic candidate is flawed in some ways. And this election comes down to four states. I mean, it really does. Florida, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. All right. You can take all the popular vote out of the equation. All right. You know, whoever the Democratic nominee is going to win is, is going to win uh, New York. They're going to win t- California. Whoever, the, you know, Trump is going to win uh, the, uh, the state that the, carry the South and carry the West. There's not a lot of states that are actually in play. I mean, you talk about the toss up states, you know, yeah, Arizona comes into play in theory. I mean, they talk about it, the toss up Minnesota, you know, in the, the New Hampshire, North Carolina. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I really think it comes down to a very small handful of states. That the Democrats need to flip from what happened in 2016. In particular, again, Florida, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan. Democrats got to win all those. I don't know if they can. I don't think they can. And when you talk about minus 175, amongst the educated elite, Donald Trump is not the most popular candidate. Those are the people who are controlling the betting markets, okay? Certainly for presidential uh, candidates. That means that there's personal bias in the number. There's a lot of rooting for the Democrats in this situation, much like there was in 2016 in the betting markets. So I think this line is very short. You have an incumbent president, and in our lifetimes, Drew, when did the incumbent lose? Well, let's see. My lifetime, you had Jimmy Carter. You know, yeah, Jimmy Carter, who was, you know, an economic quagmire in his last year. You had George Bush, who had an economic quagmire in his last year. The economy went into a recession. That's it. <laughs> recession, right. recession. Do you see a recession between now and November? Well, it's interesting you asked that, Teddy. I wouldn't have said yes until actually we're recording right now. And uh, the S&P is down big. The Dow Jones is down over 1,000 points today, just ironically, as we're t- we-, we scheduled this, guys, last week. So, uh I, no, I don't. But at the same time, I mean, coronavirus, everything else going on, I think that that actually has more of an influence on what happens in the presidential election than than the debates or, or what anybody's saying on CNN or Fox News. Well, the whole thing is that 98, 99 percent of the populace's uh, opinion is already set, is already set. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're not going to see a lot of Trump guys go, yeah, well, uh, I kind of like Trump, but I really like the Democratic candidate. Um I mean, the one candidate in theory who could attract a decent amount of Trump voters might be Michael Bloomberg. But Michael Bloomberg is going to face a very uphill battle to win that nomination after what happened here in Nevada uh, over the weekend with uh, Bernie running away with it. Um, That puts Bernie in front runner status and puts Bloomberg in rest of the field status. And he's competing with, you know, Mayor Pete and uh, Klobuchar and all of that for the same group of votes. The only way the Democrats are likely to beat Bernie is if everyone drops out and there's just one candidate going against him. The best candidate would probably be Bloomberg, but I don't see Mayor Pete dropping out today. I don't see Amy Klobuchar dropping out today. Uh, And that means 
that is going to continue to split votes, which is going to continue to to leave Bernie uh, at the top of the ticket for the Democrats. Bloomberg might be able to beat Trump. He might. He might be able to draw off enough voters for Trump, the, the modest Trump guys that are just, hey, let's add enough of the chaos. Look, let's go, let's go with Bloomberg. But when you talk about actually winning the nomination on the Democratic side, Bloomberg has a very uphill battle. And, you know, I mean, what, what are the numbers? You have Democratic nomination numbers there. What are you seeing? I mean, he's maybe in the 10 to 15 percent range, 20 percent range at the most. Uh, for its odds to win the Democratic nomination. And if he's the one candidate that could realistically beat Trump or the rest of them can't, that has to be factored into the betting betting odds, which it's not. Um, 175 is cheap. Okay, so the yeah, that and that's of course Donald Trump versus the field. Any other candidate here? Uh, We could just go through real quick on all the other candidates, at least at the top of the, the the for the Democrats here, Donald Trump versus Bernie Sanders. We got Donald Trump minus 160, Bernie Sanders plus 140, Teddy. Yeah, I, I mean, again, so I'm, I'm not going to say I'm wired in. I've got some good sources uh, when it comes to <laughs> uh, politics and, you know, inside politics. And a couple of those sources have told me that they think Bernie is live in November in a way that no other Democratic candidate would be. Because Bernie brings out the enthusiasm factor. And again, when we look at 2012 versus 2016, the difference wasn't how many votes the Republican candidate got. The difference was how many votes the Democratic candidate got. The Democratic turnout was dramatically, and again, you want to use it however, whatever kind of terminology you want. It was, the Democratic turnout was very low in 2016, whether it was suppression whether it was interference, whether it was uh, 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 a lack of excitement about Hillary. The bottom line is fewer Democratic voters participated in the process than had in any of the previous recent election cycles. That was the difference. So when you say, can Bernie attract the type of coalition that's going to get the Democratic voting numbers up? And that coalition requires... Uh, African-Americans, Latinos, suburban women, white, uh, blue collar, uh, blue collar, uh, uh, white voters. That's the four groups, disparate groups that the Democratic candidate has to attract and get votes from and get a lot of votes from and get excitement about. You tell me Bernie's going to, Bernie's going to attract from all four of those. I won't. Probably not. You know, again, my uh, people that I respect tell me that Bernie's live. From my eyes, I don't see it. Um, you know, I, 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 again, live. Should Bernie be a two dollar dog? Yeah, maybe. Two fifty? Yeah, maybe. I mean, again, I, I, I think Trump it should be in the minus three hundred range against anybody. Um, so to say that it, it is Bernie going to attract the turnout? And again, the enthusiasm, the young people are really enthusiastic for Bernie. But as we know, and again, you go back and look at you know, since the since the voting went from uh, 21 to 18 for McGovern in 72. All right. Young people don't vote as enthusiastic as they are. They don't vote the way seniors vote. And the seniors vote is is reliably conservative. So feel the burn at plus 140 might not uh, be high enough for, for, for Teddy here. We got Donald Trump. First, Michael Bloomberg up next uh, on the rotation order here. Donald Trump, and this is the closest one, guys. Donald Trump minus 120, Michael Bloomberg plus 100. So this is almost a pick em here. I mean, you know, obviously Donald Trump a, a, a minus 20 favorite here, Teddy, but I'll throw it over to you, man. This is a, a tight race between these two. Well, if, uh, if Bloomberg wins the nominations, he's live to beat Trump in a way that I don't think any other Democratic candidate is, you know. So if you want to play Trump, and then say, all right, well, let's hedge just in case Bloomberg gets the nomination. Maybe you put a little something on Bloomberg uh, in, in this particular matchup. So you could play Trump for the uh, election. And then if the Bloomberg gets the nomination, then uh, you, you're, you know, you've, you, you got an out uh, and, and you're not uh, screwed uh, because Trump against Bloomberg cannot be 175. The problem is that Bloomberg faces a very uphill battle 
to win the nomination. The only way Bloomberg wins his nomination is if it's a contested convention. All right, because he's not going to get the votes. Uh, he's not going to get the votes between now uh, and uh, the end of primary season in order to win the Democratic nomination. I, I can't even envision a scenario in which he has uh, enough uh, enough delegates to win that part of the election. So if you're betting on Bloomberg, you're betting on a contested convention, which makes him live. And we've ne- we haven't seen a contested convention. In, I haven't seen it in my lifetime. I don't know what it would look like. Uh, you know, we have reports of what they used to look like back in the day. Uh, but I really don't know how that would play out. And, and Bloomberg would be very live because he has enough money to buy anybody off to do anything. Um, but in order to get the contested convention, Bloomberg has to keep enough votes out of Sanders so he doesn't have the nomination locked up before he goes in. And that, to me, again, when you're dealing with the uh, you're dealing with two different voting blocks, you have the the Democratic liberal base who's going to get involved in the primaries, but then a much more conservative, broader spectrum of uh, electoral voters uh, in the election. And when you talk about the liberal Democratic base in Bloomberg, you know, Bloomberg was elected uh, mayor of New York twice as a Republican. So it's really hard for me to see that liberal base starting to rally around the guy, um, which means I think he's a, a, a long shot to, to, to we haven't seen the contested nomination. I don't think Bloomberg can get enough delegates. He can only win a contested nomination. I don't think that he can. I don't think that he will have the support necessarily to do that. So uh, I would not. Uh, Bloomberg versus Trump makes a good matchup for the Democrats, but I don't think Bloomberg can get there. Teddy, this question, uh, I'm just going to shoot it out there. There might be some political buffs out there that, that come at me, but it uh, shows how much I, I am into politics here, more into the betting side of things. But uh, <laughs> what exactly is a contested convention? A contested convention means that nobody has enough delegates uh, to uh, secure the nomination before the convention. Everyone votes once. They're locked into the per, the, the candidate that they uh, were uh, that they're the delegate for. And then after that first vote, there will be however many votes is necessary to find uh, until they get somebody to be the no- somebody wins enough votes for nomination. So a contested convention is a nomination where going into the convention, you don't know who's going to win the nomination, okay. which hasn't happened in our lifetime. I mean, the last time. I, I, I don't remember. I think 64. I think Goldwater was a contested convention in 64. I'm not sure. It In the modern era, it hasn't happened. Okay. You know, someone's already. Uh, someone's always had the. Even even Trump, who wasn't. You know, who was it was getting. You know, thirty thirty five percent, like Sanders is getting now. Yeah, um, I remember they I, talked about that. And there was concern. Hey, if we have a contestant. By the time uh, you know May and June roll, June rolled around, and the other candidates had dropped, Trump uh, had enough. Uh, had had ample votes to secure the nomination on on, on the first vote. Okay, so Bloomberg having money actually probably helps him. Well, it helps him in 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 the advertising. A thousand it, ways. It helps him it, in. A, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, w- w- Bloomberg having money because you were you and I were talking off air. You're like, uh, you want to talk about Mayor Pete now? Um, he he's yeah, he's the next one up. Sure. I mean, we, you were saying that you thought Mayor Pete was the you know what, what was the most likely candidate to be able to beat Trump. I you know, I don't know that uh, that that America is ready to vote for a gay president. I really don't. And while historically. The younger candidate tends to do very well against the older candidate. And you look at elections where there is a generational divide between the candidates, and it's really strong in favor of the younger candidate. It really is. Um, I, it's hard for me to, I I don't think we're as, as a country in a place where we're going to elect a gay president yet. I really don't. It, well, it comes down to um, – well, I guess if we can just read it off, I'll throw, I'll throw it over to you, uh, Teddy. And, and, guys, I also wanted to go back to if you're not really into sports betting, what these numbers actually mean. You know, uh, like next one up here, Donald Trump versus Pete Buttigieg. We got Donald Trump minus 170, Pete Buttigieg plus 150. Uh, the minus 170 there, it means you have to risk $170 to win $100. That means he's the favorite. You're ask, you're having to risk more money. Pete Buttigieg plus 150 underdog, meaning you only have to risk $100. And if he wins, you win $150. So uh, that's kind of what the numbers mean here and how much each candidate is a favorite or underdog. So we got Donald Trump minus 170, Pete Buttigieg plus 150. I'll throw it over to you, Teddy. And then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you why I think he at least has a shot to beat Trump. Yeah, oh, I, the younger candidate wins. But Mayor Pete, 
he's fighting in a very crowded space to get the nomination. And when you get that burst, he had that burst coming out of Iowa and out of New Hampshire, and you get that burst, you have to maintain that. What's happened with Mayor Pete is he's not going to win. Uh, he didn't win uh, poorly in Nevada. He's not going to win South Carolina. He's going to go into Super Tuesday and be one of X number of other candidates. And he's splitting votes with Klobuchar uh, and uh, and Bloomberg. So to see him further down in the field right now, he is, a, in my mind, a prohibitive long shot to make uh, the postseason, you know, to make the uh, yeah. uh, uh, to, to make uh, to win the nomination. Um for a lot of the stuff that people that like Mayor Ben, again, Mayor Pete has some of the things that make a really good candidate. He's got that approachability, that chat ability. People like the young guys. Um, I mean, there's there's certainly things in his favor, but he's in a crowded space. And I'm sorry, even in 2020, this country's not ready to elect a gay president. We're not. And I'm confident that would be Regardless of your polit- your personal opinions, I don't think the over 50 set's going to vote for a gay president. And that's going to, you know, uh, if Buttigieg is, uh, is the nominee, Trump minus $3 is cheap, in my opinion. The- yeah, I mean, heck, there's an argument to that. And as you're talking, I'm starting to think, yeah, you're right. He might not, even, you know, he's probably not going to get the Democratic nomination here just because he's starting to get behind. And, and you're right, it's starting to kind of snowball on him. I, I, I'm starting to worry about that as well. What I wanted to bring up, though, Teddy, was it seems like at least throughout my lifetime, the more kind of likable president, I always call it kind of just the the want to get a beer with who would you choose yeah. It, up until, you know, Trump versus Hillary, which I don't know if if a lot of people would would choose to get either. Just that it doesn't I don't think Trump drinks and I don't know if Hillary comes off that way. But before that, I feel like the president that, you know, the beer factor it won every single time throughout throughout my lifetime, just kind of the likability factor. And he kind of comes off that way with the charisma and the talk and in that. Whereas the other people in, in the race don't really catch me like that. And I feel like the American voter is more simplistic. You know, you want to dig down deep on on the news channels. But really, you know, Obama won on hope and change. Trump won on make America great again. You know, you put it on a poster, you put it on a hat. It's simple. And it's it's just likability. And that's who people vote for. That's why I think Mayor Pete has a shot. Obama won in three days. All right. That was a pick them election. The economy melted down. John McCain just said, oh, I'm going to go back to D.C. And the markets moved from Obama minus 120 to Obama minus 400 in three or four days. That was when the, uh, what was it, for the Wall Street firm collapsed. It was in September. Uh, Bear Stearns. No, it was Lehman, wasn't it? Lehman Brothers? Both, both of them did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it was literally, it was in that three-day stretch that Obama won the election. You know, uh, McCain, it wasn't a runaway from the get-go. By any stretch of the imagination, you know, those that line was very close to pick them prior to McCain's misstep. When you talk about the beer factor, you tell me which Democratic candidate people are going to want to have a beer for with more than Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump plays the everyman very, very well, despite his billionaire status. You know, he plays that role very, very well. People like him. His voters like him in a way that we don't always see. On either side uh, of the uh, uh, of the aisle, um, the one candidate that and Bush ended up losing the second uh, against Clinton. But I mean, I, did, did, I didn't want to have a beer with Dukakis. You know, Bush was not a guy that people wanted to have a beer with. Uh, not that Dukakis was either. But that's the one that I could say maybe the younger guy lost, uh, and the uh, and the guy that you might want to have a beer with lost. Uh, but that's the only one that I can think of. OK, I, I don't even really remember that one. I, I was going more off of like Clinton and then Bush and then Obama. But yeah, no, y- y- you, you got it right there. Teddy. <laughs> um, we got a couple more here, Teddy. We can go off of um, Donald Trump versus Joe Biden here. Donald Trump minus 160, Joe Biden plus 140. So that's, that's an interesting one, you know, um, amongst the group, because Biden doesn't attract the liberal base but biden's name recognition is enormous and by the fact that you you know 
one of the one of the things that candidates struggle with, even you know, the caucus is a great example where nobody knew him until the year that he's running for president. And sometimes it works where you're an outsider that people don't know of on a national level can come in. I mean, Bill Clinton's the one example where he, you know he went from a regional character to a national character and won the election in a relatively short order. But that's not necessarily the mo for the way these contests are working. So Biden's got the name recognition in a real way, you know, uh, and he has intrinsic built-in support. But Biden brings no passion for the young, the, you know, the, the younger voter has no passion for Joe Biden and for the Democrats to actually win. They're going to need young passion. <laughs> they're going to need an urban turnout and they're going to need a suburban turnout. And again, I, I don't see Biden providing at, at least one of those three. Um, could he beat Trump? Yeah, in theory he could. But honestly, I think that's a matchup that works well in Trump's favor. I do not think Biden would uh, perform well against Trump on the debate stage. And I think that many uh, look at the economy now and, and remember back to the economy in the Obama era. I don't know that that Biden's going to get the, the love. Um, at minus 160, again, Biden has looked very vulnerable throughout this process. He looked old. You know, that's what I mean. I I remember seeing Biden in person in like 1986 (laughs) and he was young and dynamic. I'm like, yeah, this guy can talk. You know, he's good. You know, he's been around a long time. I I don't think that works in his favor in this. Uh, And Biden, the mainstream media has loved this Biden thing. And then, oh, Biden's a guy. And and, and I don't think he he would draw. And I don't, I, 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 I don't think he's the best Democratic candidate to beat Trump. And I, I at minus 160, uh, I can only play late Trump in that price. But you bring up Biden looks old. I mean, really, they all look old, Teddy, don't they? Biden looks the oldest. Biden and Sanders. I mean, Biden looks uh, even with Bernie's crazy hair and, you know, uh, yeah. the old man look. When Bernie talks, he doesn't sound old. You know, he sounds passionate. And the young people love him. When Joe Biden talks, people fall asleep. You know, he's not attracting the the surge. So it's and more when about, you look at him, again, he looks old. He does. He looks older than me than Bernie. But 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 I what I was saying is like they they all kind of look old. Warren, Trump, Klobuchar, Bloomberg, Sanders. But you're saying that how they speak, they're catching you a little bit better. Yeah, Joe. I mean, yes. Okay. I you know it. There are times in U.S. history where we've wanted the grandfather candidate. You know, we wanted the nice old man to, you know, um, you know, the Eisenhower era, the Reagan era. This doesn't feel like that time in America where we want the nice grandfather, you know, the president to manage things quietly and calmly. Um, it, it just it just doesn't feel like that. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm picking up what you're laying down, Teddy. We got we got one more here. Uh, we'll, we'll break down. And guys, we do have a coupon code for the podcast, Chuck695. That's for Dr. Chuck's Major League Baseball full season here. Uh, $400 off. It's good for 48 hours. He's a high-volume MLB capper. Um, what's up? A around 30 40% uh, return on investment in the last 30 days of the season last year. So if you're looking for a lot of plays in MLB, check them out, Sports Memo. Dot com high volume MLB there Dr Chuck six nine five at checkout good for forty eight hours is the coupon code and it will take four hundred dollars off we got one more here Teddy uh, Amy Klobuchar versus Donald Trump and that one is Amy Klobuchar plus one fifty Donald Trump minus one seventy do want to throw something out here. I don't think, and this is where where I would go in and bet this. I, I haven't bet anybody, but um. I don't think she can beat Donald Trump on the debate stage. And that's the same thing why I don't think Bloomberg can win either, because I think Trump and will beat both of these two just debating. He's better at doing that. And, and I don't think she's good enough on the debate stage. I don't think she can win. Well, it's, it's funny because if you watch the 2016, the, the main debates, you know, the uh, Hillary Trump debates. Mm-hmm. Who won based entirely on your was based entirely on your political persuasion? Really? All the Republicans okay. thought that Trump won. All the Democrats thought that Hillary won. And there was there was no there were very few voters who watched that and changed their minds. You know, 
that, oh, wow, see. Trump looked worse than I thought he did. I'm going to vote for Hillary now. Or, oh, well, Hillary looks, uh, look, you know, worse than I thought. I'm going to vote for Trump now. You know, the, the Democratic voters all thought Hillary won. The Republican voters all thought Trump won. And that was that. Um, I'm with you on Klobuchar having a lot of difficulties against Trump in a lot of different ways. But Klobuchar is not winning the nomination. It's in a rally. You know, if you if you want to give your money to the books so that they hold it for a couple of months and refund it, this is your butt to make. Because uh, <laughs> Klobuchar is not winning this nomination. Not There's not a scenario that I can picture that puts Amy Klobuchar with uh, the, the votes to, to win the nomination. I mean, is there anything you can picture? Um, no, I think it would be tough just because, like, I've, I've never really heard of her. And on the debate stage, she doesn't, like, kind of take over, like I'm saying. So I, I, I kind of agree with you. I, it's kind of tough to catch people's eyes. Um, and also, Teddy, I, I'm not seeing Elizabeth Warren on here. Did, do you know why she's not on? Did she drop out? or? No, she hasn't dropped out yet. But uh, Elizabeth Warren's time is, uh, is, is running thin. You know, okay. I mean, she it was, you know, it, it's it was Elizabeth versus Bernie for the for the left. And, and Bernie's won that. Um, so. Uh, now. The scenario here again, any Democrat that thinks they have a chance at a contested convention may stay in the race longer. I wouldn't be surprised if Elizabeth Warren stays in this race for a while, because in theory, she could be live at a contested convention. And when the voters didn't want to go for Bernie, let's go for someone else to the left. And here's Liz Warren as a, as a, as a, as a possibility. But how realistic is that? I don't know. Um, Liz Warren is no, you know, Klobuchar and, and Warren have no chance, um, in my opinion, uh, to win the Democratic nomination. Um, it's tough for a woman. You know, it's tougher for a woman than it is for a man. Teddy, uh, last one I wanted to kind of bring up here is uh, the popular vote. You can bet on that as well. We got Donald Trump versus the field. And this is interesting because Donald Trump was a favorite in all of the matchups here. But talking about the popular vote, guys, Donald Trump plus 155 underdog in the field minus 175. So all of a sudden he becomes a uh, uh, an underdog in terms of the popular vote, Teddy. Well, yeah, I mean, he lost a popular vote by, what, three million in the first uh, a meeting between uh, uh, Trump and the Democrats. And when you, exp again, when, when you look at the big population states, you know, your California is going to go what? You know, three to one for the Democrat? <laughs> okay. The, the, I, I don't know. New, York, New York's going to go three, you know, uh, heavily for the Democrat. Jersey, you know, the, the, the states with the population base, the biggest population base, Illinois, uh, they tend to vote Democrat and vote Democrat strongly. The states where the Republicans have an edge, Texas, you know, uh, certainly stands out. Georgia, uh, Florida is a contested state, I would say. Uh, but it's certainly been a Republican state. Arizona has been a Republican state. Um, these are not states where the Republicans are going to win 70-30, like the Democrats are going to win those in all in, – in, in, you know, Cal and California and, and New York and all of those. So from a popular vote standpoint, the Democratic candidate already has an edge. Um, that said, that's not a bet I want to make until I know who the Democratic candidate is. Um, because a lot of this election, this election is going to be, you know, in terms of margins and that sort of thing. It's, it has everything to do with turnout. Uh, turnout has everything to do with enthusiasm and voter suppression. And we need to know if the candidate is going to be someone who uh, Democrats are actually enthused about or if it's, uh, well, we just got this guy because maybe he can beat Trump. Um, and then we don't have the level of enthusiasm that perhaps they might need to get the popular vote turnout. Yeah, like a Bloomberg might be a classic example where Bloomberg probably helps the Democrats from an electoral standpoint. I don't know that he helps them from a win the popular vote standpoint. Good point. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. Um, so uh, that that's not a bet I would make until I knew the Democratic no nominee. No. Okay. The better bet to me right now is is Trump to win. Teddy covers a man of many talents. He's red hot right now, eleven and two, eighty five percent all sports last six days. College hoops heating up as well, guys. Check him out, sportsmemo.com. Um, it's $9 Monday. He's got a play up there. West Coast wipeout. So uh, late night start here on sportsmemo.com discounted to just $9. All plays discounted to just $9 at sportsmemo.com. We also got the uh, coupon for the podcast Chuck 695 at checkout for Dr. Chuck's full MLB season. Uh, if you're looking for a high volume MLB handicapper, he's probably your guy. 
Chuck695 at checkout for $400 off his full season MLB package. Teddy, you want to throw anything else out before we shut this down? I don't know. It was kind of, look, it was an interesting discussion. This is the first political podcast I've ever done. Um, and no, that's not, honestly, you talk about me. I'm incredibly boring, Drew. My only hobby is, is this politics stuff. That's all okay. I, uh, but I am interested in it. It fascinates me. It always has. Um, and the horse race element of it and the betting element of it fascinates me as well. And that's why I appreciate uh, you giving me the time to do this podcast. So we'll do another one, hopefully, uh, at some point before uh, the uh, general election. Uh, we talked last week, and I didn't have a coupon code for you guys. I didn't have the code. And again, uh, one of the things that I'm, we're thinking about for next football season, and it's just a, thinking about how to do it, how to do it properly. I want to be able to get people plays as I'm making them. So the concept was I'm going to make the bet, I'm going to screenshot it, I'm going to tweet it to everybody. Um, we're looking to put to some type of service like that for people together. If you're interested, this is just an interest list, but if you're interested, please text TC, Teddy Covers, TC, to 33. 222. So all you got to do, just text TC to 33222. When we figure out what we're going to do, uh, we'll contact you. And hopefully uh, uh, it'll be something you're interested in. So thank you. And that's all I have to say for today. All so right. Yeah, set up on a good. I was 11 and 0 going into yesterday. I'm still mad about yesterday. Uh, but it's good to have a little hot streak going. Uh, it's time. And let's see if we can uh, keep it rolling. Yeah, check them out, sportsmemo.com, guys. $9 Monday. Let us also know in the comments on Twitter, at Teddy underscore covers, at Drew Martin Betts, if you like the podcast, what you think we need to change for last time, and uh, if we should do another present presidential odds podcast in the future. But, guys, best of luck with your bets. We'll be back tomorrow with Andrew McGinnis talking NHL handicapping. So best of luck with your bets, guys.